Well, I'm sure that most of you watching have already heard about this by now, but on Monday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the Don't Say Gay Bill into law, which effectively bans teachers in Florida from even acknowledging the existence of LGBTQ plus people in grades K through three. Now, we don't know what the parameters of this bill are. In actuality, it was left purposefully vague. It says grades K through three, but it leaves the door open for higher grades. Also, you know, proponents of the bill like Ron DeSantis will say, you know, really, this is about you not teaching our children to be gay and indoctrinating them into a gay or trans lifestyle. But one, that's already not happening. Two, you can't do that. So what exactly is going to be the effect of this legislation? Well, as I stated at the start of this video, it's going to force teachers to play it safe and just pretend like gay people and trans people don't exist. And one Florida teacher spoke out and explained what this means for him as an educator in the state of Florida going forward. I have a child in kindergarten right now. I know exactly that my, ch my child has two teachers, one of which has a daughter at home um, and is single. The other is married and has four children. I, I know everything about their lives because my kid tells me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are 100% correct. Um, that's what we do as educators. We build relationships with our kids. And in order to build relationships, you talk about your home life. You talk about what you do on the weekends. That's building community. I It scares me to death that I am not going to be able to have these conversations with my children because they're going to ask me what I did on the weekend. I don't want to have to hide that my partner and I went paddle boarding this weekend because yeah. then they ask, well, what does partner mean, Mr. Bernard? And, you know, I, I'm worried. Can I tell them what it means? I'm also worried for my kids. I have a little girl uh, this year who has two moms and the kids are curious about her two moms. They want to know about her two moms. You know, if they come to if they go to her and ask her about her two moms and she doesn't know what to say, they're going to come to me and ask me. And then, uh, you know, so what do I do? It just it opens up uh, for parents to really take some legal action against the schools and teachers and I, I am afraid uh, for myself my colleagues and my students how do you expect to navigate that that situation because for, for as a parent of a young child i want to celebrate difference and i want my child to celebrate differences as well and to learn about them absolutely you know it's hard to navigate uh, especially when you have words uh, that are uh, injecting indoctrinating when you have those words coming from um you know our state legislators and our you know our higher government uh those words uh those are synonymous with some very hurtful words and so when we think of when i think about navigating this bill um, you know, I, I am going to be mindful, but I'm going to follow my kids' discretion and what they want to discuss. And if they ask me, I'm going to be true and honest to them because it's who I am. And he may very well lose his job if he is indeed honest, which is horrifying. Teachers don't know what they can and can't say because of this bill. It's a form of censorship, and the GOP just spent all of last year screeching about cancel culture and how they're against censorship, but now all of a sudden in 2022, we're seeing them promote censorship because of the resurgence of homophobia. Now, the question is, how do you sell the American population on homophobia when they've largely moved on and they embrace same-sex marriage and LGBTQ plus rights mostly? How do you do that, and why would you want to do this? Will you do this by selling homophobia as protecting children. You don't just come out and say, well, I'm against same-sex marriage, point blank. No, you sell it as, I think really we have to protect children from these gay people who wanna groom your kids. Uh, and they've learned from the CRT debate, right? They've learned that you can get people to care about culture war issues if you frame it in a certain way. And protecting children is something that is going to resonate with a lot of Americans for good reason. We all want to protect children, right? But that's why they do it. And the reason why they're doing this is because if they stay, you know, focused on these culture war issues, then they don't have to focus on healthcare. They don't have to talk about how they don't have a plan for education or how to fix poverty in the United States or climate change. They could just focus on these issues that pull people in. You don't have to think much about them. Most people have an, an opinion of LGBTQ plus rights. So, you know, it, it's an easy political win for them if they can actually adequately foster homophobia once again. And that is what they're doing. So because they found a way to reintroduce homophobia to the masses again and sell it to them in a persuasive way, they've effectively ended their tactical retreat because they lost the gay marriage debate. 
So we haven't heard the GOP talk much about gay rights in the past five years. I mean, they focused heavily on trans issues, but there's a reason why they're talking about this again. And it's because they've ended their tactical retreat on gay rights. And journalist Mark Joseph Stern broke this down in a really interesting thread on Twitter. He writes, Last week, I wrote about the GOP ending its tactical retreat on same-sex marriage and turbocharging its anti-gay agenda. There's a cultural element to this, too. We're seeing the party's media figures attempt to resuscitate the kind of casual homophobia that seemed to be waning. It's not just the resurgence of Republican claims that gay people are groomers who indoctrinate and molest children. It's the return of nasty drive-by homophobia, the casual mockery of same-sex couples that works hand-in-hand -hand with anti-gay legislation. It seems to me that casual mockery of gay people and their families is on the rise among the conservative media figures whose job it is to restore a cultural environment in which anti-gay legislation is deemed acceptable. We are backsliding on gay rights with truly shocking speed. Bottom line, the surge of anti-gay legislation cannot be separated from the rise in casual homophobia among the GOP's media figures, who are striving to create a cultural environment in which homophobic laws can flourish once again and it's happening with lightning speed. And that should alarm everyone who cares about LGBTQ plus rights. That should alarm everyone who has a loved one who's gay or bisexual or trans or non-binary because this is what the GOP has chosen to focus on, right? And they are absolutely disciplined in their messaging. So now they've chosen to go all in on homophobia again and this is what they're doing. Why? Again, it's because if they focus on this, if they distract you with this, they don't have to focus on the fact that they don't have a plan to fix our broken healthcare system or education system. They don't have to focus on the fact that if you're a millennial in this country, you can't buy a home, you basically can't move out from your parents' house. They don't have to focus on all of that. Just stay bickering about these culture war issues that society has largely moved on from because we're going to reintroduce these issues and frame it a little bit differently. So people who previously weren't susceptible to homophobic rhetoric now are opening their minds to it. Notice how we taught you about critical race theory and how that's indoctrinating children. Well, we know another way that the libs are indoctrinating children. They're indoctrinating them into the gay and trans lifestyle. That's what they're trying to sell to people. I mean, Joe Rogan, he's notoriously transphobic, but for the most part, he hasn't been homophobic to my knowledge. But yet, when he talks about the don't say gay bill, he used their framing. He said, well, look, I think people don't just want you to groom their children. That's pretty simple, right? Well, who wants to groom children? But the idea that this is a don't say gay, Right. Because you're 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 saying that ages, uh, you know, first grade to third grade, that you shouldn't be bringing up these subjects to them. I, mean, I think a lot of people are saying, no, I just don't want you grooming my kids for whatever your ideology is. Notice how this standard isn't applied to heterosexual couples. When you watch a Disney movie and you see a prince and a princess kiss, do you think, uh oh, that's grooming my child because if they're kissing and they can be married, that implies that they can also have sex. And I don't want my kid learning about that. That's grooming. No, it's because this stems from the homophobic belief that gays are predators. Gays are overly promiscuous and their relationships exist specifically for sexual purposes. There's no friendship there. There's no romance there. It's not like gays are starting lives together. It's just all about sex. It's all homophobic. So they're ginning up homophobia and they're selling homophobia to the masses under the guise of we need to protect children and it's the most disgusting and insidious form of homophobia it might not be the case that they're overtly going after same-sex marriage although they will if they can successfully overturn roe v wade but now they're reigniting this fight about whether or not kids knowing that gay people exist means that kids are being taught to be gay you can't be taught to be gay or trans you either are or you aren't. I mean, growing up and still till this day, in basically every single movie or TV show that I watch or book that I read, there's always at least some reference to heterosexuality. I've never been tempted into the heterosexual lifestyle, not even a single time in my life. So if it's the same way for me, then obviously if you're heterosexual, you can't be tempted into the gay lifestyle. Kids are going to find out that gay and trans people exist. They're going to find out that their friend has two mommies or two daddies. They're going to find out that their teacher is actually a trans woman. That's a part of life. But 
these reactionaries want to stop any progress that we've made over the course of the last five years because they don't want to actually see society progress when it comes to other elements of life, healthcare, education. They want to hold us all back by distracting us with these culture war issues. And it's gross. And I wish that people would see through it, but they don't see through it. They're falling for it. And my hope is that leftist allies who are straight push back vociferously against this new wave of homophobia that we're seeing. Because if not, then it's not just going to be these don't say gay bills that we see. We will actually see tangible gains that we've made be erased. 